Say, did you know that Norway recently celebrated its National Constitution Day? What am I talking about? Of course you did! Well, being a Norwegian myself, I feel the need to mark this grandest of occasion with something rather special. A film review! Oh, okay, so maybe that's not actually all that special, but the film I'm going to look at definitely is. You see, I am going to take a look at the Norwegian classic simply known as Håkon Håkonsen. Or Shipwrecked, if you're an idiot. That's right, Håkon Håkonsen. Based on a Norwegian novel of the same name and inspired by tales like Robinson Crusoe and Treasure Island, this film tells the story of a young boy and his adventures on the great seas. It's a swashbuckling adventure involving pirates, hidden treasures and a deserted island. You know, usual Norwegian stuff. Okay, so maybe this isn't really the most Norwegian film in existence, but there's a pretty good reason for that. It was made in cooperation with Walt Disney Pictures. Yep, you heard right, Disney was involved with this sucker, which is probably how it managed to become one of the biggest and most expensive Norwegian films of all time. But was that money well spent? Does this film still hold up, or is it just an expensive embarrassment? Well, we're about to find out, so brace yourself for some of the worst English you'll ever hear in your entire life from the film, not me, as we take a look at Håkon Håkonsen. So we start this classic Norwegian adventure about a classic Norwegian boy in the classic Norwegian alleys of England. Uh, okay. We see a naval officer walking down the streets when he's suddenly confronted by a mysterious shadowy figure that turns out to be Gabriel Byrne? No, really, that's Gabriel Byrne! Gabriel fucking Byrne is in this film! How fucking awesome is that? Okay, so you may or may not really like Gabriel Byrne that much, if at all, but still, it's pretty damn cool that they got a fairly big name Hollywood actor to star in this relatively small Norwegian film. So who exactly is Gabriel Byrne playing here? Well, apparently he's a man known as John Merrick who was believed to have been killed. He and one of his henchmen disarm the naval officer and then orders him to take off his uniform. What for? Because there can only be one of you. And it's gonna be me. But you'll not pass for an officer in Her Majesty's Navy. You don't have this. We then cut to a different location and an immediate downgrade in acting skills. Var runt i farmen går jag nu. Då ska du få. Farmen kommer igen. Han har försvunnit i sjöss. Yeah, that was just terrible. Now, to be fair, most of the actors in this film are decent enough, but none of the Norwegian actors can really hold a candle to Gabriel Byrne, especially not the kid actors. In any case, this young boy is Håkon, our hero for this adventure. In case you missed it, he was being picked on because his father, a sailor, is seemingly lost at sea. <laughs> his father might be dead! <laughs> That's fucking hilarious! <laughs> what a loser! <laughs> Why are you staring at me like that? Okay, so the bully is mainly picking on him because Håkon's father owes the bully's father a lot of money, which kinda makes a bit more sense. But yeah, picking on someone because their father might be lost at sea? Pretty mean. In any case, it seems that Håkon's father isn't quite as lost as first thought, as he finally returns home in the very next scene. Apparently, he was thrown overboard after his foot got tangled up in some ropes, and although he badly damaged his leg in the process, this guy, named Jens, managed to save him and bring him home. They all go inside for some coffee and warmth, and it turns out that Håkon's father brought back a little surprise for him. Vet du hva det der er, Håkon? Det er et mønstringsbrev på skipet mitt. Håkon, det er du som skal bli den nye dekksgutten. Nei, du er rede du, Håkon, ikke sant? Well, as it turns out, not so much. But after his mother points out that he's not only too young, but that they'll need him on the farm more than ever now that his father is injured, he agrees to let Håkon stay at home. Unfortunately, Håkon's father still has a debt to pay off, and after he fails to get an extension on his own, as he won't be able to go out to sea again, it seems they're about to lose their farm. Luckily, Håkon has a solution. I pay the That's right, Håkon is going to be a sailor after all, making that previous scene entirely pointless. Oh come on, I had to! Anyway, after saying their goodbyes, Håkon and Jens take to the sea. After introducing himself to the ship's captain and getting a warning that he'll be dropped off in London if he can't prove his worth, we see him doing various tasks around the ship as he tries to learn the ways of a sailor. At first he doesn't exactly excel, but he does eventually improve, and just before they reach London, the captain makes him an official member of the crew. 
After a bit of shore leave in London, the crew are finally ready for their long voyage that is apparently bound for Sydney and Calcutta. As these are known pirate waters, the shipowning company responsible for this journey have hired a first officer from the British Royal Navy to accompany them. Unfortunately, he's not who they think he is. So, Mr. Howell, I'm pleased to have you and your bosun join us. I wish you welcome aboard. Hey, you know what? I think this guy might be bad news. I'm not quite sure what it is, but there's just something about him that makes me think he's a bad guy. What could it be? Oh, oh, of course. Man, I'm such an idiot. It's obvious, isn't it? He has massive sideburns. Oh, and he also killed someone in the beginning of the film, but mostly it's the sideburns. They're just evil. Okay, so obviously this guy is up to no good, and we all know that, but can I ask why? No, seriously, is there any good reason for revealing to us in the first fucking scene of the film that this guy is tricking everyone? Wouldn't it have been much better if we, like Hawkorn and the rest of the crew, didn't find out who he is until later? After all, isn't this supposed to be Hawkorn's story? Why should we know any more about this than he does? I just fucking hate it when films do this sort of crap. Either way, Howell, or Merrick as we know he's really called, joins the crew and they set sail. While putting some stuff away below deck, Hawkorn makes a bit of a disturbing discovery after he accidentally breaks some crates open. Yep, it turns out that Merrick has snuck some weapons aboard the ship, but at least he doesn't catch Hawkorn discovering the oh shit. Every ship has her own secrets. And every true sailor knows when to keep his mouth shut for the sake of the ship and his mates. Hmm? I not know any secrets. I not even know what secret mean. I just stupid boy. I speak great English. So even though Hawkorn convinces Merrick that he'll stay quiet about the weapons, he still doesn't feel quite right about doing so. He asks the captain for advice without actually telling him anything yet, but the captain, thinking that they're talking about smuggled rum, tells Hawkorn to sleep on it and discuss it with him in the morning if he still feels the same then. After all, it's not like Merrick poisons the captain's cognac that he drinks from every night, making him so sick that he dies before Hawkorn has a chance to speak to him again. Ah, oh, damn it! So with the captain gone, Hawkorn decides to show Jens the hidden weapons, but he's not too worried. So, forstår du glass ute på när jag är inne? Hör nu här. Han Howell är brittisk marinofficer, inte sant? Han är här för att beskydda oss. Korsen han gör det är inte vårt problem. Kom igen. Yeah, I guess you're right, Jens. Nothing about this is at all suspicious. I don't know what Hawkon could have been thinking. I mean, it's not like Howell would have just told you about the weapons if they were meant for defense. Why would he do that? So that you'd be prepared for battle? Pfft, that's just silly. In any case, the ship eventually reaches Sydney, where the crew are given some bad news. As they're apparently behind schedule, the new captain, Merrick, cancels all their shore leave and brings aboard a few extra crew members, who all look so trustworthy. Carry on. Yeah, I can't see anything suspicious about these guys. They look like a really nice, honorable bunch of... pirates. Seriously, even a blind parrot with a full frontal lobotomy could tell that these guys are pirates. Luckily for them, the entire crew of this ship are apparently dumber than toast, so they all set sail for Calcutta. Later, while putting away some ropes, Hawkorn discovers a stowaway who turns out to be a girl named Mary. She's trying to hitch a ride to her uncle who lives in Calcutta, as she doesn't want to be put in an orphanage. Why don't you stay with your parents? Idiot. So Hawkorn promises not to tell anyone about Mary, and as a thank you, she offers to teach him to read. Unfortunately, Hawkorn isn't very good at this whole secrecy thing, and is discovered by Jens one night as he's going to see Mary. Luckily for them, Jens only warns them to be careful and then leaves them alone. Not so luckily for them, Mary is eventually discovered anyway, and Merrick demands to know who has been helping her out. After he eventually reveals that he's the one responsible, Hawkorn is about to be whipped when suddenly... Yeah, it seems the storm around them is picking up, and after crashing into a reef, the ship begins to sink. The crew start to abandon the ship, but as Hawkorn is busy trying to save Mary who is locked up below deck, Jens makes them wait. Merrick is not waiting for anyone though, and shoots the line to the lifeboats, leaving Jens, Hawkorn and Mary behind. 
they jump overboard to get away from the sinking ship, but they get separated as we see Hawkorn being taken away by the storm. The next day, Hawkorn wakes up on a deserted island, and after realizing that he is completely alone, he begins exploring, but not before enjoying some delicious coconuts. Quite a few, in fact. Well, I guess washing up on a deserted island may not be so bad after all. Apparently, you'll have enough food to just pig out as much as you want. Good to know. Anyway, after having his fill of coconuts, Hawkorn eventually comes across a cave. After almost turning himself into a human shish kebab, he stumbles upon some hidden chest filled with some pretty fake looking treasure and a bunch of weapons. He also finds a pirate flag containing a map and a newspaper clipping revealing what the rest of us have known for the entire film. Merrick. Okay, three things. One, we already know who Merrick is, so this reveal is fucking wasted. Two, why would Merrick not only save that newspaper clipping, but hide it with his treasure on a deserted island? That just doesn't make any sense. Three, you're seriously telling me that Hawkorn just happened to get washed up on the one island where Merrick hid this treasure? That's kind of a stretch, I have to say. Okay, so I guess you could argue that Merrick was probably leading the ship towards this island when they sank, so it wouldn't be completely inconceivable that Hawkorn would wind up there, but still, it seems a bit too convenient in my opinion. In any case, after discovering the truth about Merrick and realizing that he may come back to this island eventually, Hawkorn packs away the camp he had set up and tries to remove any trace of his presence. While moving everything to another spot, he also discovers that the island may not be as deserted as it seems. Okay, so this is an island with a fucking gorilla on it. A gorilla. An ape. Sometimes also somewhat mistakenly referred to as a monkey. On an island. You can see where I'm going with this, right? Yeah, apparently certain gorillas live in solitude on deserted islands. I... I didn't know that. Either way, Hawkorn manages to scare the gorilla off by blowing on a trumpet he found earlier. Actually, the gorilla seems more annoyed than scared. Just look at his reaction. What the fuck was that? Is that really the best you can do? Man, you really can't play for shit, get off of crying out loud. Go get some fucking lessons, will ya? Fuck, I can't believe this idiot. Things you can play the trumpet without any training whatsoever, fucking moron! Anyway, after scaring away the gorilla, Hawkorn puts everything inside the hollow tree, and then begins to set up various traps around the island in case Merrick does eventually return. After he falls asleep and dreams about his family, Hawkorn begins to miss them. But it's okay, because guess who shows up to comfort him? Oh, now that's actually a rather nice moment. Or at least it would be if it wasn't so incredibly silly. I mean, come on, it's a kid on a deserted island being comforted by a fucking gorilla. No, not even a gorilla, an obvious guy in a gorilla suit. Yeah, I'll take that seriously. So after that touching and totally not silly moment, Hawkorn climbs to the top of a tree and surveys the area using a spyglass he found in one of the treasure chests. He spots another island relatively close by with smoke coming from it, so he builds himself a raft and goes to investigate. On the island, he eventually comes across a village of natives, where he also spots Mary, seemingly being mistreated by the natives, so he swings into action. Literally. Yikes! Hand away! However, it turns out that this was a bit unnecessary as Jens suddenly turns up and informs Hawkorn that the natives are their friends. Apparently, they rescued Jens and Mary from the ocean, and they've been helping them search for Hawkorn ever since. But Mary was fighting with them. Those boys, they claim he's their sister, and now they expect me to clean up after them. Well, they can forget it. She fights with them every night. As well she should. I mean, sure, they saved her life and all, but asking her to clean up after them? That's just going way too far. So after the gang reunites, they say goodbye to the natives and head back to Hawkorn's Island. 
Hawkon shows them his hideout and the various traps, and after a good night's sleep, they spot Merrick and his crew finally returning to the island. They head back to a hiding spot and wait for Merrick and his men to fall into Hawkon's traps, but unfortunately, none of them seem to work quite right. Now, wait a minute. We saw Hawkon test these traps earlier and they all seem to work perfectly. Why would they suddenly stop working the instant they actually need it? What do you mean, why? Because! Pfft, why? Either way, Merrick discovers that the treasure is gone and he orders his men to find it and kill whoever took it from him. He also tells them to bring a couple of their prisoners with them and to lock the rest up. Unsurprisingly, the prisoners turn out to be Hawkon and Jens' shipmates, so they decide to rescue them, take back the ship and leave Merrick and his men behind. They decide that Mary should sneak aboard the ship with the treasure and rescue the prisoners there, while Hawkon and Jens stay behind to rescue the men on the island. This plan actually goes off rather smoothly as they manage to free all of their friends, but Hawkon, Jens and the others get caught in a chase with the pirates on the island. After seemingly losing the pirates by crossing a ravine, Hawkon and the others make it back to the hideout, but unfortunately, someone's there waiting for them. Hello, shipmates. Hi, Hi, Dr. Dr. Nick! Yeah, somehow, Merrick apparently knew that Hawkon and the others would come this way and manages to surprise them. He gives them a fairly standard bad guy speech, culminating in him threatening to blow Hawkon's head off if he doesn't tell him where the treasure is. But luckily for Hawkon, Merrick just happens to be standing a few steps away from the one trap on this island that works. I'm gonna count to three, and then you're gonna tell me where my treasure is. One. Two. After that, the gang rushes to the raft and head for the ship. Why they don't use the pirates' boat or try to disable it, I don't know, but it does mean that Merrick and his crew eventually catch up to them and give chase. Merrick is just about to take his shot and kill Hawkon, when Merry finally fires the ship's cannon and blows him away. Actually, the cannon just destroys their boat as they're all perfectly fine. Yeah, because I'm sure this... ...wouldn't cause anyone any harm whatsoever. Either way, Merrick is defeated and Hawkon and the others return home. When he arrives at his farm, Hawkon's family naturally can't believe their eyes as they thought he was dead. They also get to meet Merry as Hawkon has invited her to live with them, but unfortunately, his father has some bad news. Hawkon is afraid that there are no one who comes to live here for a long time, because they go to sale. It was sold today morning, Papa. What? Gården is born now. That's right, Hawkorn has bought the farm, which means they can all head inside and live happily ever after. So that was Hawkorn Hawkinson, and all things considered, I think it's pretty good. Okay, so the acting isn't the best, at least from the Norwegians, the story isn't the most original or unique, and there are far too many silly, awkward, or just downright nonsensical moments to count, but it still really works. The characters are likeable, the scenery is beautiful, and it's just a really fun and exciting adventure to sit through. Oh sure, it doesn't have the most spectacular action scenes in the world, but if you want a solid and entertaining pirate adventure that the whole family can enjoy, this film will not let you down. With that said, there's only one question left to answer. Whatever happened to that gorilla? Hey, did you like the video you just saw? Then why not subscribe to my channel or follow me on Daily Motion? Because you'd rather like me on Facebook? Okay, just remember to check out my previous videos as well. What's that? You'd much rather support me on Patreon? Well, aren't you awesome? I guess that means you'll be heading over to my webpage as well then. Man, you really are the greatest!